Hi, good morning. My name is Dalip Sahota and welcome to the Wheelchair Fencing Coach channel. In this our third video, we'll be looking at a series of drills or routines which I feel are necessary to help the student memorize all the fencing actions. This repetition of sequences helps develop both the hand speed and the muscle memory, which is especially important in the fast actions required during a fencing match. It's said that it takes about 10,000 repetitions to get an action right. So let's get going. So the actions I'm going to look at today start with a cart beat from the coach followed by three further actions by the student. On my initial beat, this is used to develop the hand speed. On my initial beat, the fencer will do a counter beat to regain priority and do a direct attack. On the next action, on my beat, the, the, the student takes a counter beat and an immediate disengage followed by a lunge. This immediate disengage happens after a short shoulder movement forward to let the opponent know or to make the opponent think that you're about to attack in that direct same line again. That's it. In the third action, we start, I start the stain with a cart beat. The student takes a counter beat, followed by a double disengage, and then a direct attack. As a hand speed exercise, the coach stays upright and allows Defensor to see the parry so they can do one disengage, or they allow us to see the double parry from the coach so they can do a double disengage. So to do the whole sequence in one, okay, <clears throat> top of We're going to run through the same exercise again, and I'm going to try and point out a little bit more that the fencer needs to do. Because Aid is a little bit more experienced, he knows what the actions are. Now we're going to assume that this is a completely novice fencer. So, on my beat, because I have the priority, you have to beat back to take the priority, and immediately you touch my blade, you attack direct. Okay? So we go. So there's no hesitation, you must go very, very fast from the beat. Up, in. Good, one more time. Up, good. So here, now you're telling your fencer, your opponent, that you're going to attack very, very fast. So you set them up for the next action, which on my beat, counter beat again, you throw the shoulder forward to make me think you're going to attack, I go for a parry, you come underneath, and then you attack. Okay. One more time, on my beat, you count the beat, you throw the shoulder forward to make me think you're going to attack, I do the parry, you come underneath, and hit. So let's do it in full speed. Up. One more time. Up. Good. The final action, obviously, now the opponent knows you're going to disengage, they may take a defensive action by doing two lateral parries. So on, the cap, on my beat, the counter beat, you drop the shoulder, you give me a plate, again, Sorry. here, you come forward, a little bit, drop the shoulder, disengage, disengage, and go straight through. Okay? One, two, that's it. One, two. Now try and do it in one motion, instead of a stop and a go, you mustn't stop, you must flow forward all the time. One, two. That's a little hesitation. Ah, okay. We're going to develop this action, these three actions, 
as an attack action from the fencer. In order to encourage the fencer to attack, the coach must encourage that forward movement by taking the body backwards. So this time, on that beat, you count the beat, watch where my body is, and then the full lunge. By me, the coach moving backwards, it will encourage the fencer to do a deep lunge and a good lunge. Here, the lunge wasn't quite so good. Okay, keep it right up. That's better. One more time. Good. In the second action with the disengage, I again go back to encourage the fencer to lunge. Up. Good. One more lunge. Up. One more time. Up. Good. The final action with the double disengage, again, I go back rapidly. Up. Good. In wheelchair fencing, it's better on the beat not to give your blade because they'll attack it and hit you. As a double disengage exercise, it's better to go here, come forward with the shoulder, keep the hand back, drop the guard a little bit so you can do the double disengage down here. You're not waiting for the coach to take the double parries. Up, good. Keep the hand back a little bit. Up, okay, now lunge at the same time. Excellent. The three actions can also be used as a defensive action by the fencer. This time, instead of the fencer doing a beat, they go back to take a parry, a carved parry. So, this time, the coach actually attacks, so I must come forward with the body and give a good lunge as a presentation. So, Eddie, this time I'm going to attack here, I'm going to do a beat attack, we go back to take the parry. And direct. There you go. Good. Again. One more time, a little bit quicker. Good. Second action. I go with my attack. I need to go back to take the parry because I know he's doing a parry repost. So the fencer does a disengage and attacks on the other side. So once again, Aiden, nice and slowly, on my attack, take the parry and stop. Start coming well forward with the shoulder, no, with the shoulder, with the shoulder, here, disengage, and in. Good. One more time. So attack, for me, disengage, and in. Okay, that's good. One more time. Okay. Last one. Okay. Again, you gave the blade too early. One more time. Okay. Come forward. Good. Final sequence, Eddie goes back and does the compound repost, the one-two action. So again, this time nice and slow, I attack with a boot attack, he shows me the blade and the shoulder coming forward, encourages me to take two lateral parries. Here, come forward, one, two, good. And up, 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 good. A little bit quicker this time. Up, 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 good. We're now going to start using this sequence as both an attack by the fencer and also as a defense by the fencer. We'll start with the first section, which is going to be a beat direct from 80 as an attack, a can't parry direct repost. So here 80, on my attack, on my beat, counter bit direct. So here the coach goes back to allow the lunge to come through. He checks. Does the repost by moving forward, allows the parry to happen, and then the full repost here. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Good. Last one. One, two, three. Good. The second action, beat, counter beat, disengage the attack. I check, I repost, it does a parry, cart. Disengage, repost. Up, that's good. So remember, shoulder, then disengage. One, two, good. Up, up, up. 
So as a coach, I can lean backwards and forwards as much as I want to encourage deeper lunges. Uh -huh. And one, two, three, good. And the third sequence, beat, counter beat, one, two. Again, the coach goes back. Two, three, uh -huh. just two, just two. One, one. So again, don't take the hand forward, beat, take the shoulder forward. Double disengage. Up, up, two. Up. Only two. two. Car parry is too big. Make the car parry smaller. Up. 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 Good. Last one. Up. Up. Now the difficult bit. We're going to do all three actions in one long sequence. We're going to do it slowly. <laughs> at three actions but you see how difficult it is to try and get the mind to work. As a wheelchair fencing coach I want you to recognize the differences of what you need to do as a coach to encourage the fencer to do the right action. On encouraging the fencer to attack on my feet I lean back encouraging the fencer to lunge. As the lunge does happen, I check as a parry, leaning back, and then I advance forward. Again, you see the motion? If I do this, he will attack my blade and hit me. So I need to check, bring the shoulder forward, then bring the point forward. And again, aiming at the target and as a nice angulation to help him take the parry. And then the second action again, he comes forward. I decide that I'm going to be lean back a little bit further this time to make sure he lunges fully. And then I check deeper. And again, I throw the body forward. The point's coming down, the shoulder's coming in. And he takes the second action and double disengages. So here, up, up, up. up. The same three actions can actually be done from an initiation by the coach from a six beat. And they can also be done from an initiation by the coach from a 17 beat and an octave beat. The last two we'll do at another stage, or that you as the coach can develop yourselves. We're just going to show you the actions from a six beat. This time, instead of being on an open guard, the blades are crossed, and the coach will start from this side. And beat here, up, direct, good. Start, disengage again, the shoulder, the hand drops a little. Once again, do that sharper beat. Good, one, two. Up, again, the shoulder, drop the guard. Up, up, one more time. 
Again. Right. Okay. You're getting caught. Mm -hmm. So on the counter beat, drop the guard and come forward with the disengage. Keep the hand back, don't take the hand forward. That's the way. Okay. The whole sequence. One. Two. Good. Three. There's a little bit of hesitations, but that's something we can develop. We're now going to develop this even further by using your Spurtman as an attack and a defense and a cease and a cart. And it's up to the fencer to recognize which accent needs to be appropriate rather than as a coach telling the fencer what to do. But stay back, drop the shoulder. Shoulder, keep the hand back. That's it. That, again. Shoulder dropped. Again. Go down, down. So, you're giving the hand too early. So here, bring the shoulder, look what's happening, and then decide what to do. The shoulder and keeping the hand back will give you the time to decide what to do. Okay. Yeah, try and keep your body mm -hmm. still, decide what the action is, and then go. Your body is just going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Now do it, sir. Do it, sir. By stopping to watch what's happening, you get the right actions. One of the most important things to remember is how the body moves in a fencing action. What we don't want is for the shoulder to drop and the body to stay upright because the whole angle will be wrong. What we do want is for the spine to be upright, the shoulders to be parallel to the floor, and the whole body moves forward. So the difference is this is incorrect, this is correct. The shoulder didn't move. Mm -hmm. The shoulder didn't move. Come forward towards me. Right, yeah, start again. Yeah. Don't drop the shoulder until the shoulder is dropping. Keep it up. Keep your spine tight. Keep your spine tight. Elongate. Mm -hmm. That's it. One more time. Good. So to recap today's actions. The coach starts off with a beat. The fencer must take a counter beat to take the priority. And then we follow through with three actions. One's direct, one's the disengage, and the final one is a double disengage or a one-two. These actions can then be used as a training sequence for speeding up the hand actions, as a training sequence for doing an attack action, and then as a training sequence to do a defense action bearing in mind that when you do the defense action, fencer takes a parry rather than a beat.
So you've got to make sure the parry is in the correct angle. We then progress that on to doing it from a cart beat and then to a cease beat, and then combining both the carts and the cease and an attack or a defense. All complicated actions, but simple actions that stress and put a lot of pressure on the fencer to get the right actions. When we're going forward to the next video, we'll be looking more at the modern techniques that are used in wheelchair fencing and also developed from the able body fencing. In able body fencing, there's a lot more marching attacks and more complicated broken time attacks. We're going to look at how we can incorporate that into a wheelchair fencing action and also develop that further to involve a lot more flick hits. Thank you very much.